a firestorm. He came. was just a kid. I don't want this to be swept under People the rug. He said he was standing in. his All ground. America don't care Anybody about it. He pulled right the country. He becomes a rallying call. Something snapped. They say that time heals all wounds. It does not. My first question is, when you guys were both approached to make this docu-series, what was the most cathartic part of the process? Well, um, we knew that it was a possibility um, because of the book. When we were in conversations about the book, um, I think they were talking to us then about doing a documentary, but it was really difficult to get through writing the book and trying to re recap and, and um, try to remember some of the things that happened because it was a very dark period in my life and some of the things I don't remember that ha actually happened mm -hmm. that I was there for, but I was probably numb to the fact that I was sitting there. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just brought up a lot of feelings. It just brought up, um, you know, uh, just making us remember the things that we probably tried to forget. Mm -hmm. I think revisiting those moments, um, and, and a lot of times you want to, you really don't want to think about those those uh, dark moments. Um, but your eyes look order, red now. Are you crying? No, 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 no. Um, they had me. I took medication without eating. Oh, okay. And so, yes, yeah, that's one of the effects. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but I think that just reliving the the, the whole scenario and. Thinking about the, uh, thinking about his life being cut short, um, but what can we do to uh, substantiate his life? What can we do to make his life uh, more important that that more important than what what he was viewed as? Mm -hmm. So that you know the the documentary um, for me would help us shed some light on who he truly was. The mm -hmm. book shed light on who he truly was, but the documentary, you get an in-depth look at um, who he truly was. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's, and it's um, what, you know, our story being told, backed up by um, a plethora of information that was gathered by the, by the film crew. And so, um, the documentary is going to be very informative. It, well, it, it is very informative, and, and when you when you first, I know for me when I uh, first saw uh, the first the first series, it was very emotional. Yeah, I watched it uh, last really, night again, and it was real emotional. It, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, it is. And and just imagine that's just the first that's just the first part. So you got six parts of real informative right, right, things, right. and and so I think that uh, what, it's going to be very impactful, uh, not only for the African American community, and the reason why I say that is because other cultures can learn from our culture. A lot of people are afraid to learn from us, mm -hmm. but this is this is something that they have no choice but to learn from our culture. I'm glad you brought that up because Trayvon was killed in 2012. Barack Obama was president, and now this docu-series is coming out under a Trump administration. How many hearts or minds do you think this docu-series will change now that we have this man in the White House? Probably just as many as it changed from 2012. I mean, of course, it, um, it just reminded us of what we go through. This is not something new for African Americans, it just reminds us of us of the struggle that we face every day mm -hmm. and not only just for our young men but for our young ladies as well and so it reminds us that we're we are living in a time where our children cannot go to school and come home safely correct um it reminds us that we cannot go to church and come home safely we can't go to a park and play baseball and come home safely um, the movie theater, the mall, there's just so many different instances, instances that people have gone to just normal day-to-day -day events and have not been able to come home safely. And so this will remind us that 
it crosses all lines, you know? Um, and sometimes it takes, uh, the book was very detailed, but the documentary is more intense because now you're able to see some of the things, you're able to hear some of the things that happen. Where sometimes people are not visual people, they're reading and they kind of figure that this is what's going on, but they really can't grasp what they, they actually need happened. They, need to, they need to see it. And so the documentary will spell out that. Mm -hmm. um, the the book, some people are readers and they can get into the visual, but the documentary is very clear. It, it's, it's very intentional. Um, it's very real to life. Um, it's very intense, direct. It's just... I need to file a missing person report in my son. Hey, what's his name? Trayvon Martin. Stanford Police Department. Hey, there's a real suspicious guy. These <laughs> always get away. There's so many things. No civic coding in the book is no civic coding in the docu series. <clears throat> the documentary um, is it's meant to be educational, and that's why it's, it, it's intense like that. You know, this is something that we learn for. This is how you learn to, to speak up. This is how you don't accept uh, your child was shot in a justifiable manner and you take that and you live with that for the rest of your life. Now, this teaches you how um, you have the right to speak up for your child. You have the right to speak up for your community. You have the right to speak up for your husband, your wife. Um, and, and so you don't have, it, you know, this isn't, this isn't back in, in the 60s, in the civil rights days where uh, we were afraid to speak up because they were going to, you know, hit us with the water hoses or sick the dogs on us or beat us with the billy clubs. No, we, we don't, we, we've come a long way from that. You know, it's okay to stand up and, and, and voice your opinion and be legally right. When you hear about, just recently, Stephon Clark, what does that do to you? For me personally, just just seeing how one of the uh, um, one of the spokes, spokesmen for the uh, police department got up and said that you know how the young man was he, he tried to turn the uh, iPhone into a, a handgun, mm -hmm. and just to see that that's sickening, that's sickening to me because now you're justifying that this is why this young man got killed. This young man was in his, his, his grandparents' uh, backyard. Prop, backyard with an iPhone in his hand and you tell you mean to tell me it was okay for you guys to let off X amount of rounds and take his life because he had an iPhone. You felt threatened that the way he positioned his iPhone, right. it looked like he was pointing a weapon at you. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's that's, that's, that's what this docu-series is about, educating ourselves on what we should do when we encounter things like this, on who's, who, who has your best interest in your life, or of your life, how your life is valued. And so I, I think that um, the takeaway from this, it'll be huge. It's gonna impact, uh, if, whether, whether or not you, you agree with us, it's gonna impact your life. As the unofficial or official face of this movement, what are some of the things that you now can't do? Because in the um, docu-series, you said after finding out that Trayvon was killed, originally you were like, I wanted to get retribution, I wanted revenge, and then you realize that there's a right way to go about it. When people think of you, they think of your son, they think of how he was killed and how you guys had were thrusted into the forefront. What are some things that you now cannot to do? I mean, you're, I think you still. My life, our life is yeah. probably so public that it's certain things. I mean, that that we wouldn't do, but you can't do because people have recorders out. I mean, I love to dance, but I don't dance as much as I used to because everywhere I go, people record me dancing, and so I'm like. It, it makes me feel uncomfortable that mm -hmm. you're recording me and I'm just, I'm just doing what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. dancing. I, I, I don't look at it as, as um, you know, a big deal, but it makes me feel uncomfortable 
um, when I do try to enjoy myself and I try to enjoy life, it, it makes me uncomfortable when people record everything, you know. And so, you know, I'm just cautious um, about what I do and I'm cautious about what I say um, because I know somebody is always listening and somebody is always watching. So that's a big difference um, from my life before, mm -hmm. um, from my life now. You know, I still try to go to events and I still try to go, you know, I still, you know, go with my fr family. I still hang out with my friends. Um, but I just have to be a little more careful about what I do, what I say, um, you know, just the surroundings because I don't want people to look at me and judge me. Um, you know, um, Sabrina Fulton, you're right? Like Sabrina Fulton, right? And right. I, I remember I was in um, D.C. at uh, an event that they had there, and um, after everything was over, the day was we had a long day. We had been doing um, I don't know if we went to a protest or something. We was in D.C. for something, and so at the end of the night, we were downstairs at the restaurant in the hotel. And I ordered a glass of wine and this lady came up and she was like taking a picture and she, I was like, wait a minute, what, what happened? And right. she says, oh, you drink wine? And I said, yes, I drink wine. I mean, I, we want people to know that we, we are average parents, that, that is, is no celebrity status. There are no difference to who we were then from who we are now. Th there was a time that they wanted to do like training and we refuse to train like, me, like, like media training yeah. like media training like just training just about you know kind of shape what we say and we've always been like i just need to speak from my heart. From heart i right. just don't need you to give me a teleprompter and tell me what to say right. you know maybe i need bullets so i can stay on point about what i want to say but we have never had anybody like to to coach us, to try to tell us what to say. And I remember there were times where they people approach us and they wanted to like- Script out. Right, they wanted to polish us up. They wanted us to be these other type of parents. And we not, Right. we, we just regular folks. We just regular parents. We just average, an average mom and dad. And so that I miss from my life. Mm -hmm. I think one, one thing that, like, um, what, what, you know, when we first got on the, uh, on, on the news, I think how we carried ourselves and how we articulated our conversation, our dialogue, um, not to say we are the most educated, uh, parents in the world, but, you know, our parents groomed us where, you know, you should be able to, you should be able to pronunciate, um, things and, and have have good grammar when you're on TV, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and I say it all the time, man, I'm, I'm as hood as it get and I don't sugarcoat it. I and, can the, and the thing about it is, the thing <laughs> about, but I know, you know, I know um, the time and place, the time and place. Um, I know that um, we are, we are vo uh, the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. And so we understand that we have to have discretion about the things that we do mm -hmm. uh, in public. Our home, but, but what I think what a lot of people fail to realize is the fact that our home has been open to the public since February 26, 2012. And we haven't had anything to hide. Mm -hmm. And we're not hiding anything, but people look for us to, people actually look for us to, to comfort them. Mm -hmm. And so when people, when you have a, a, a nation of people that look for you for comfort and guidance and, and kind words and uh, wisdom, you truly, you truly have to uh, be careful what you do. Oftentimes, whenever a parent loses a child to gun violence, especially African-American parents, they always ask you, do you forgive the person who killed your son? Do you think that's a fair question? I mean, people people want to know. I guess they want to know. That's something that's of interest to them. Is if we have forgiven, um, or if I have forgiven, and I always answer that I have not. I'm not at that point in my grieving process that I can say honestly that I have. You know, people say it um, prematurely and say, 
you know, their child is dead and, and they say the next week, okay, I forgive the person that shot. I have not gotten to that space where I feel comfortable saying that I have forgiven because the pain is still so intense that I have not, I have not gotten there yet. Okay, so my last question is a, it's a real one. God willing, you all will live long, fruitful, healthy, happy lives, and you will continue to fight for what you're fighting for. But when it's your time and you see your son again, what will you say to him? That's a good question. Um, I would probably tell him that I miss him yeah. and that he shouldn't have left me. <laughs> oh, it's definitely uh, the call. I mean, you know, we had we used to have some candid conversations, uh, and, and, and so one of the things that we always spoke about is the love that we have for each other. And so the first thing I would probably tell him is that, you know, I love you, and we did, you know, and, and we missed you. And uh, you know, I would probably ask him, um, is he proud of the work that we've done in his name? And, and and I know how to, I know that conversation. Knowing him, I know how that conversation will <laughs> go. Definitely. Thank you.